coordinator at Indian Institute of Business Psychology. Really excited and glad to see you all you here to learn about uh, today's discussion on careers in business psychology. Well, it's going to be a very interesting discussion, but before we move forward, I would just like to talk about what IIBP is doing and what are the few of the initiators, uh, initiatives that we have taken uh, so far. And if you are interested in anything, just reach out to us and we'll be glad to you know, give you responses back. Okay, so no, Indian Institute of Business... Please join Anusha for this uh, Zoom careers in business uh, counseling. Thank you. Okay. Uh, sorry for the interruption. Uh, so as I continue forward, that Indian Institute of Business Psychology is uh, has recently launched a series called The Voice of Educators, where we are bringing the voice of educators, Pan India talking about what business psychology is in academics and in professional setting. In the Institute of Business Psychology mission is to build a robust community for all things business psychology in India. So one common platform to learn about business psychology right from uh, what we see from a student perspective to uh, what professionals are doing uh, in the corporates. Um, Shalini, if you can kindly present next slide, please. Uh, here are a few of the things uh, about IABP that they have uh, launched and they are offering. Uh, IABP offers certifications in psychometric testing level one and two, as well as uh, uh, verifications in assessment and development centers. They accredite uh, on psychometric test reviews and accredited services uh, providers. Psycho uh, in Institute of Business Psychology also offer a variety of memberships. Uh, right, right from student membership to associate membership to full professional membership. And if you don't know about anything, which membership to join, then you can always be our well-wisher and join our well-wisher membership where you'll get a few updates about what are the latest events uh, that IIABB is going to host. As you can see, here are a few of the ongoing initiatives that if you are any one of you are interested in and want to learn more about, you definitely can reach out to us. Uh, IABP has recently launched a mental health initiative where more than 28 trained mental health professionals are there to serve you. IABP, just after today's, uh, as, as we have promised you that we have a surprise for you. Uh, so after today's discussion in careers in business psychology, we will be uh, sharing with you informative guide on business psychology for students pan India. So please stay tuned with us till the end because in the end we will be definitely sharing with you and we'll be just discussing in brief if time allows us. And uh, we are soon going to launch ebooks on various different topics, uh, which is going to be very sh short and uh, sweet read for anyone who really wants to dive into topics of psychometric testing, mindfulness, uh, or anything related to business psychology. So here are the ongoing initiatives. And if you're interested in learning more about, uh, then you can definitely reach out to us. And let's move forward uh, and talk about uh, today's webinar, which is on careers in business psychology. Uh, and we are glad to have Mr. Vijay Pandey here. Well, uh, I was thinking about how to introduce Vijay, sir. Uh, and this is what I came up with. Uh, in very simplest of way, uh, sir explains the most complex of concepts in the most easy way so uh, whenever he explains you get the gist uh, you get the concept in the most easy way as possible no matter how difficult the concept is so this is how i relate to sir whenever whenever i i have uh, i got the opportunity to learn from sir mr vijay pandey uh, also is an entrepreneur a mentor uh, i would say he knows in and out most of the things about psychometric testing uh, and uh, today, uh, we are really, really, really glad to have you, sir, here. I mean, uh, it's a really it's a, it's a pleasure that you're going to speak about the careers in business psychology, which is a topic which most of the students really, really, really want to learn more about. And since there are a lot of misguided information about the subject, about how to go about in choosing a subfield in regards to business psychology and how to professionally establish yourself in business psychology is something that many aspirants are looking forward to. I hope everyone who has joined us, uh, currently 100 participants have joined us and there is one in the waiting room. So glad uh, to all the 100 participants. I know there are a lot of questions that you have in your mind. I would request everyone, uh, I would request everyone to please allow sir to speak uh, in the beginning and then we'll take questions in the end. Uh, and, and sir, uh, 
Okay, uh, sir, uh, you can you can take the charge from your own lips. Thank you, uh, thank you, Vipul, for such a nice introduction, and uh, thanks for uh, giving a brief introduction of IIBP as a as a host of this platform. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I I see a lot of familiar name and faces, so I feel very comfortable talking to. Otherwise, whenever the audience size goes more than thirty, my mind starts kind of getting blocked. Uh, because i'm i'm not a group person i i enjoy working in small groups in one to one situation so i have made a small powerpoint presentation and which is not on basically powerpoint but it's on menti and for all of us who are here uh please if you have a second device use it because uh use it to go to menti.com uh and then the way i have designed this session that it will be very interactive so we have already got into 10 minutes into it uh, next 20 to 25 minute i will speak and then 20 minute we should have an open forum discussion kind of thing because many a things especially when it comes to experience sharing that can be done better in a form of let's say open forum discussion rather than you know having a one way dialogue so i'm going to share with you my screen so careers in business psychology so in this presentation for it will go for almost 35 minute uh we will discuss what and how what it is and how to get into it how to grow so please go to menti.com and you have to use this code 61821134 so 61821134 that's the code that you have to use for taking part into the activities quizzes questions and etc so the first thing first outline of the discussion very simple outline three things what is business psychology how to be a business psychologist how to get into that field and then how to grow as a business psychologist so i will be sharing mostly about from uh, my experience and experience of people i work with who i have seen growing really really fast into the field so before we get into that please go to menti.com and you will find a question there answer that question please so you need to go to menti.com and then the the and the moment you enter into menti.com it will ask you for a code then you enter this code 61821134 voila so here is the result that's the best advantage of it you can see and it is showing this x means that there is no right answer in that so that's why it is showing this x thing now So in this session we have 21 undergraduate students, 21 20 postgraduate students, then nine people who are entering into the workforce, 14 people who are working full time, and four who are working part time. So this is roughly the audience group that we have. I'll keep that in mind while talking. So based on that, I will allocate the time. So now, first thing first, what is business psychology? in one line in the most simplest form it is applying psychology to business so it's a field where knowledge from psychology is used to make businesses better to solve business problems address business issues and this is a field excuse me actually branched out from io psychology which is Mr. industrial Mr. organizational psychology Uh, it's branched out from io psychology which is industrial organizational psychology which itself is a branch of social psychology so within social psychology you study social structure then organizations are a typical form of social structure so within io industrial organizational psychology you study that and then businesses are generally a larger area than io so for example there are many businesses which are not industry or which are not organizations like all the uh, 
enterprise businesses, entrepreneurs, uh, independent people, they are businesses, but they are not kind of uh, industries or they are not big or large, even a small size organization, they are one or two or three people team. So in fact, one of, one of you asked, uh, what is the, if I would explain the difference between IO and business psychology, it could be useful. So the difference between IO and business psychology is that IO is an old bottle, old wine. Uh, business psychology is the same old wine put in a new bottle plus added some flavors. So IO is like plain vodka and business psychology is vodka with different kind of, vodka matured in different fruits. So there are many different path and very diverse path in, in business psychology. And here I have just noted some path, one is HR. So by studying business psychology, you can get into HR field human resources, where you are basically responsible for three functions, getting the people, most talented, qualified people, then keeping those people, and third, developing those people. Another area of business psychology is marketing. Uh, you might be aware of it, or you might not be knowing that there is a lot, lot many psychologists, business psychologists, who do not have the title of business psychologist, they have the title of senior marketing manager or advertising professional or a marketing consultant. A lot of business psychology happens in the field of marketing. Similarly, advertising, how to craft an ad which appeals to emotions. In fact, uh, I have been working on a couple projects related to that where I'm working with advertisers and helping them to understand the emotional undercurrent of messages and how to tap into that. So, uh, because it's it's an introductory session, so we, I cannot go deeper into that. Otherwise, it's it's an amazing area to kind of be in. Then there are market surveys, in which business psychologists work on designing the surveys, interpreting the survey results, analyzing the surveys, etc. Then business psychologists also are found in. OD, LND, coaching, and therapy. So it is an interdisciplinary science. It's, it's not, let's say, one kind of monolith field like psychology or sociology or statistics or programming, but it, it's basically an intersection of all that. So a typical business psychologist uses knowledge from sociology, psychology, statistics, programming, business, like how to run a business, how to set up a business, the finance part of it, the accounting part of it, and economics to understand the broader macro and micro economic structures. Uh, lastly, it is an emerging field. And because it is an emerging field, there is a lot of confusion. There is a lot of chaos. There is a lot of uncertainty. As I said that many business psychologists do not have the title of business psychologist. They work as marketing uh, executive or senior marketing manager or AVP marketing and advertising and in HR and in OD, different fields. Though there has been some people uh, who are very active uh, on social media and they are kind of, you know, uh, advocating very strongly for the, for the position of chief business psychology officer or chief business psychologist in organizations on in tune of CEO, CFO like that. They want a CBO in the organization. Uh, but still it is a field which is an emerging field. And second important thing to know about it that this is an unregulated field. Means there is no law to govern the titles and the professional work or professional code in this field. So, anybody can call themselves a business psychologist. It's not a protected title. For example, clinical psychologist is a protected title in India and in many other countries. You cannot call yourself a clinical psychologist unless and until you are registered with a professional body, which is basically uh, authorized by government to give the title. The title of psychologist 
in India is not protected, but in France where I am currently, this title is protect protected. So you cannot call yourself as a psychologist without having gone through five year of psychology training and one year of internship. One year of supervised internship you need in addition to your five year of psychology training to call yourself a psychologist. Then there is another protected title here, work psychologist. Work psychologist is also protected title. It is called psychologue du travail in French. But business psychologist, nowhere in the world, it is a protected title. Then there is a lot of lateral entries into the field. Most business psychologists do not have a BA or BSc or MA or MSc or PhD in business psychology. In fact, very few universities in India or abroad, I, I'm familiar with the education system of uh, India, Europe, and USA. In USA, since long, uh, many universities are offering uh, BA or BSc in psycho business psychology, MA, MSc in uh, business psychology, and PhD in business psychology. But in India, it's very recent phenomenon. Very recently, some universities have started offering degree into that. In fact, Indian Institute of Business Psychology was established in 2000. Uh, it was 2017, yeah. So 2011 was the first meeting when people started thinking that, okay, we should have something like business psychology in India. And in 2017, it was established. So before that, there was not even a, a let's say a, a proper term business psychology in India. So it's, it's a very nascent field. Now, the second thing is that what all business psychologists do. And here I will be talking about the, the activity, the profession, the business, the title. So in terms of work of a business psychologist, it ranges from research to practice and consulting in between. So on one hand, you have pure academic researchers in business psychology. And what those researchers do? they study psychological phenomenon which is related to business outcomes. For example, impact of COVID on team relations. So when COVID hit, health uh, healthcare people started preparing the hospital, preparing the places to deal with that. Some, uh, all the journalists and other people started kind of taking that, you know, modifying their news to promote the message that, okay, maintain the social distancing. In fact, uh, I had a big problem at that time to call it social distancing. I, I was more into the favor of calling it physical distancing because it is not that we, are dis we have to distance socially. We have to actually connect socially if there is uncertainty. Whenever there is uncert uncertainty in the environment, the antidote of the fear and stress that is coming from that uncertainty is people connection. So actually we, we need to connect more when there is fear and uncertainty. So, but that connection need not to be physical. Like I don't need to touch your face I, or I didn't need to kind of, kind of be very close to you in order to feel emotionally and socially connected to you. Uh, in fact, uh, almost half of my connects on LinkedIn, uh, I have never met them. So, and like few of them I have met only on, uh, in, in let's say Zoom or any kind of uh, virtual medium. But the connect is important. Sharing is important. So I was very much against of calling it social distancing, but calling it physical distancing, but then, Many of my colleagues also, they pointed out that, okay, if you call it physical, it could be, it could quickly go into the area of sexual. So maybe that's why journalists started calling it a social distancing. So anyway, so the point here is that different people working in different profession will take it, take the action as per their line of work. So, Researchers who were in business psychology, they immediately started 
kind of understanding okay because of covid now we have new environment new change situation and how interpersonal relation team relations will play into that in fact uh, i as a business psychologist was also involved in that uh, impact of covid on team relations i have done a lot of research into it now that research could be of practical use so if i if i am a consultant i would use that research immediately but if i am a pure researcher i don't care whether it is of practical use today or not what i care is finding the truth finding the pattern so that kick of finding something hidden or finding adding to the body of knowledge is the kick for the researcher so one kind of people who go into business psychology what they do is research an example of research here is impact of covid on team relation mental health in uncertain time what are the causes and effect of mental health health when time becomes becomes uncertain so there are different dynamics of health mental health when there is certainty in the environment and there are very different dynamics of mental health when there is uncertainty in the environment so studying that that's what business psychology researcher does then romantic relationship at work many companies have policies about it that you cannot or can have romantic relationship at work there are some companies who say that you can have a romantic relationship with your colleague or with another employee in the same organization but you have to declare it there are some organizations say that the moment you have a romantic relationship you have to leave the organization there are some other companies who say that you just cannot have and there are some organizations who have no policy about it they are silent then the second area is practice in practice i have i've just here put some examples like developing test conducting employee surveys conducting coaching sessions conducting therapy sessions these are the examples of practice into business psychology and the third area which is a mix of practice and research is consulting for example and this is this is again a uh, work which i have done personally is helping a company to get high click through ratio by modifying the content of the ad to match personality so click through ratio is basically how many people clicked after viewing that ad so let's say if 100 people see the ad and 8 people click then your ctr is 8% so how can we move that from 8% to 12% by the way standard ctr is 3% so 3% is good uh if someone is getting like 12% 18% ctr that is like very very good and the more ctr you get the better value you get so in in google ad if you have let's say your ad on impression then you will pay the same money if you get 20 click or you get 200 click so then it makes a lot of sense to have more uh, a better content matching to different kind of personality then creating best fit profile is another another example of consulting then you can have a mix of any of these research consulting and practice in business psychology so there is a whole plethora of thing in business psychology with one bottom line and the bottom line is whenever you are using the idea or concept from business psychology from psychology to address business issues you are doing business psychology no matter what your title is no matter what your job function is and as it is a nascent field i think it will take uh, like maybe 10 years for it to be formalized and have a kind of identity of its own separate from others like there was a time when psychology was not a subject it was taught in philosophy department then now there is no subject as psychology uh, like you have clinical psychology you have industrial organizational psychology nobody does psychology psychology is taught only as introduction to psychology in the undergraduate level first class that's all after that it is specific so in the same way there will be a time like in 10 year when there will be like a 
you know, uh, graduate program in business psychology. In fact, there are many universities which are already offering graduate program in business psychology. So there will be graduate, postgraduate and PhD programs in business psychology. So I hope it gave you some idea of what they do. Now, how to get into the field? Now, there are multiple routes to get into this field. One is the traditional route that you have a graduate degree in any field, whether it is science, arts, commerce, any field. You have a postgraduate degree, which is related to some field of sociology, economics, marketing, etc. And then you have a PhD. So there are some routes which go from graduate. After being graduate, you can get into the field like survey, market, marketing survey, research, HR. You can get into that just after being graduate. Then there are some fields which require postgraduate degree. For example, being a, let's say, being even an HR professional in a, in a reputed organization, it requires master degree. Uh, being a researcher definitely requires a minimum master degree. A PhD is desirable. Uh, being a consultant requires minimum uh, master degree. In fact, nowadays for most jobs, entry level jobs, which are called, let's say, white collar jobs in business psychology, they require a postgraduate degree, which is, uh, and here when I say postgraduate, uh, it, it's, it's typically in Indian sense, because uh, in US, graduate is called like uh, their their graduate is equal to masters in your Euro, europe follows the same pattern as india three year is called graduate plus two year is called master so the, you have bachelor and master and the the term graduate is used for both uh, in fact literally what graduate means is that you moved on from something so you graduated so when people pass high school, they graduate from high school like that. So here by graduate, I mean bachelor, by postgraduate, I mean master and then PhD. So this is the traditional route. Then there is a lateral entry route that you are working in HR and then you realize that you have actually more interest in understanding the psychology or psychological aspects of phenomenon. So for example, uh, you are recruiting people but you have more interest in understanding what makes people fit into a particular role rather than scheduling the interview, finding the people, talking to the people and convincing them and following up with them. So then from recruitment, you can slide into business psychology field in which you would be working mostly on evaluation part. So you will not be searching for candidates. You will not be lining them up for interview, but most of the time you will be evaluating their psychological profile with the requirement of the job and writing comments saying that this job requires being high agreeable, high conscientious, and this person is high agreeable, high conscientious, so there is a match. This job requires being high open, but this person is moderately open, and because of that, there will be these challenges possible. So you'll, you shift into that field. Sim similarly from marketing, uh, rather than, let's say, finding out best go-to marketing strategy, you look at what is the profile of your audience, your targeted audience, and what is going to appeal them? What kind of masses is going to appeal them? What is the kind of personality traits which are valued in the culture or in the society or in your target group? And based on that, how you should market. So for example, if you are marketing into the, what we call it the Bible Belt in USA, which is basically the middle part, not the Eastern coast, not the Western coast, but the middle part, then their people are more conservative. So conservative people, if you want to market them, you market on the basis on the, the primary emotion should be fear that stick to your roots, stick to your practices. Otherwise something bad will happen. So if your product uh, your, your marketing of your product can focus on what bad could happen if you don't use my product. That is the better marketing, stra marketing strategy for Bible Belt. For Eastern Coast and Western Coast, 
there are people more li- they are those are the people more li- liberal there you should focus more on the hope focus more on the possibility that this can be done that can be done so instead of finding let's say the go to market strategy you start looking at the psychological aspect of your uh, audience targeted audience and then you start looking at crafting the message thereby you are applying psychology into business and you shift from being a marketer to a bu- being a business psychologist same for advertising and operations there are when you when you once you start focusing more on the psychological aspect you are doing business psychology the third uh, route to get into it as a second career so there are many people who are more like they are not happy with one career they their personality is such that they don't feel comfortable having doing one thing for 30 year 40 year of their life there are other kind of people who enjoy doing that for example just imagine uh, imagine a person uh, you know who is who has worked in fact uh, i was reading recently there is a lady who worked for 15 year on mrna and her work is actually very useful now for treating corona but then she never knew that if, even if her work will ever be used for anything but she spent 15 year into that mrna is one chap one paragraph in the chapter of our high school book on biology that's all and then even at phd level there are hardly few theses written on that and in that narrow field she spent 15 year so there are people who go that deep then there are people who do not enjoy going deep they don't like it they don't find any satisfaction into that they they enjoy going wide so second career comes from two different fields like people who want to go wide they have to have they have a 9 to 5 job or they have a proper job and then they have a side gig and then some people they say that okay for 5 year i'll work in hr and then i will go and work in operations then i want to work in marketing because i want to be ceo in 30 year so that i have i want to because i want to be ceo i want to work in all fields so that i have the total knowledge of the business so some people as part of their journey they focus on this aspect and they become business psychologist for quite some time then there are full time part time freelance all kind of work available in that most important thing is that two patterns here which i would like to highlight which i have observed here number one most jobs are not advertised so you will not see a position advertised for business psychologist mostly it is through network and through word of mouth that those jobs are advertised or those jobs are uh, populated secondly most work in this area is freelance work because most companies have not structured their policies their processes their organization in such a way that they can focus more on the psychological aspect of organization so what happens is that they look for expertise they look for freelancing into that area and in fact uh, if i look at my career uh, i had to in the beginning i had to wait for 3 year to get a proper opening into a uh, field where i can apply psychology re- really to business so i got into psychometric testing field but then before that while waiting for that i was working in the field of recruitment and consulting and then i worked for like 7 8 year as a full time employee starting from an assistant manager in r&d to being director of r&d and then i left it as full time and started consulting because consulting is where i feel that this is my home this is my space because in consulting what i do is that i'm working on one project seriously deeply for like 6 to 9 month then i go and work on another project 
Then I go and work on another project. Sometimes I have three projects running. And this is the kind of lifestyle that I admire for myself. I would have never spent that much time with my kids, with my family, with my friends, if I was working full time. So different people have different kind of orientation. So if you have an orientation towards, let's say more flexible kind of working, then business psychology is a very good field for that. It, it's uh, most people who work in the field of business psychology, they are either part-time or freelancer. There are few full-time openings, but very few. And full-time openings are generally in large organization. In fact, there is a very good uh, blog called psychologyatwork.blog. Uh, we will share that uh, URL later on also. Uh, there you can go and find openings in, in business psychology field coming up. So this is about how to get into the field. Now, what can you do to make your entry into the field smart? And here, again, I, I, I use the SMART as acronym for a specific, measurable, and achievable, realistic, and time-bound. So first step for that is to know yourself because any area, no matter which area you go into business psychology, you will be working on some psychological aspect. And as we know, psychological realities are always co-created. So let's say for example, uh, on the extroversion and introversion scale, I'm somewhere in the middle and a little tilted towards extroversion. So when I speak to people who are more extrovert than me, they, they regard me as introverted person. So all the extroverts, they think that I'm introvert. All the introverts, they think that I'm extrovert. And my behavior also, if I'm surrounded by extroverted people, I typically behave in introverted manner. But if I'm surrounded by introverted people, I typically behave in extroverted manner. So my behavior, my relationship is curated with the fact that where, where is my position on that continuum. And like extroversion, introversion, there are many other dimensions of personality at least there are five main broader dimensions of personality. And you should know where you are or what is your home or what is your location on those so that you can relate to other people better. So the first step of entry into working in business psychology is one hour, work on yourself, know yourself. If you have not taken ever an assessment in big five, Go to Google, type big five assessment, open source, or type open psychometric. And there is a very beautiful questionnaire and uh, result like, don't go for those, you know, BuzzFeed type questions like what kind of vegetable are you or what kind of, uh, uh, you know, mushroom are you? That, that's useless. That's not psychology. That's kind of uh, pop psychology. Go for... There are many websites created by serious professionals and they, are made, they have made it open source available for free because they are the people who are paid nicely by their employers, by their government, which is basically government funded institutions. So they have made this, like there is this Oregon Institute which has made this ORI.org. You go there, IPIP, International Personality Item Pool, a lot of information available. Then there is Open Psychometric Project, uh, which is an interdisciplinary project uh, supported by multiple professionals. So first, know yourself. Second, find a mentor. All the work related to psychology is work, interpersonal work or relational work. And in relational work, you need to understand your, your location, your position, your, I always use the word location in, in, a, in a topology of relationship. And your mentor is the person who keeps you or who helps you keeping on track. Number three, do a lot of self-study and projects. So let's say if you want to make a career but you don't have anything, 
in that like you have no knowledge you have no expertise nobody knows you in that utilize your time to study study the core for example uh, if you want to let's say begin the business psychology uh, let's say begin the advertising read the work of uh, sigmund freud read the work of how freud's nephew created a huge advertising movement in usa following the psychoanalytic system that freud gave and then read the work of kurt levin who came and who said that it's all bullshit and the way you are doing it as it's is ineffective and uh, ineffective to the least and manipulative to the to the best of it so he said that no you should be purely rational data based and he gave a mathematical way of approaching business problems so read the work of kurt, kurt levin and read the originals do not read the you know commentary on commentary on commentary no try to read the originals try to read if if you want to understand psychoanalysis read what fried wrote do not read a commentary on fried's work or a commentary of commentary on fried's work or an interpretation of fried's work interpretations are good only if you have read the original if you have read the original then you can see that from original how things change how things evolve and that will tap you into the mentality of the let's say a business psychologist this is how like in order to be a business psychologist you have to develop that thinking and in our best way to develop that thinking is to read the original you know many people i i meet uh, in especially in academic setting and they they challenge about freudian idea i tell them that like <laughs> you know you are not being fair to freud just imagine you know being a doctor in 1800 with zero access to the all the modern tools that we have today available for doctors and then you have patients coming in they have no biological basis of their symptoms like what the hell you will do either you say that okay i don't know how to treat you go home or you will if you are a real doctor you will try to find some way some way where it can be treated and fried managed to find and discover and reveal things about psychology which we consider as normal today so we we call like you know unconscious subconscious we use it all the time fried is the person who actually made a map of the unconscious these times we always talk about projection regression this and that these are all the terms given by fried so all the good things about the fried we forget about it we consider oh it's normal everybody knows that it's common sense all the bad things about fried like his excessive obsession towards libido which was in viennese time it is understandable in today's time it is totally rubbish but then we need to read it original to understand it like what is relevant what is not relevant so do a lot lot of self study and then just doing study is not enough you should make a profile you should make a something where people can see what you have done so whenever you study something make an outcome of that study like simplest outcome could be that just make a summary and share it so that way people will know in the field that you are working on something and you are uh, you will be visible and that visibility will get you your first job or your first assignment or your first thing into that like you can be super intelligent super knowledgeable but if nobody knows then you know it will be good for you still but you will not get a project because of that I if you are a people. student try and find an internship and internship as a, is an area where which is very close to my heart and i i i talked multiple times about internship for me i strongly believe that all internship must be paid as an employer i made a policy in my company that no internship should be there without number one a proper project number two mentorship time with a person who who is working full time and money 
interns deserve these three things they deserve a, a proper project they deserve mentorship time and they deserve money now there is another side of this story which in which employers say that well we are spending so much and then interns just leave and don't do nothing it is part of your social responsibility you must do it it's as simple as that if you are an student internship is the best thing that you can do with your career or with your life to launch yourself in a smart manner in the field of business psychology and for internship again go see who is offering internship then inquire about that ask the person like who are the other people who have done internship from your place and talk to those people and ask them how was your experience how it was would you recommend me going there and do internship third through your self study you do this uh show your work either on github or in google drive or in website in fact recently just last week i hired an intern and i hired him simply because he wrote me a message long ago and he sent his github profile link there was not much on that github link just two pages but then the thing that made me most interested in his profile is that rather than trying uh, telling me that okay give me a job and then i will work he is telling me that look i have learned already and i have done this this thing and that thing and i am interested in this field so i did not have a kind of position for him i created a position <clears throat> i talk to one of my client i say that hey look uh, this is the project i'm thinking of if i launch like something like that would you finance it he said yeah i will finance i said okay so i have a person who is financing that i have a person who wants to do that i connected both so if you are active if you are visible if you are showing your work through github through google drive if you if you don't know github if you feel it complicated just create a google drive whatever you create notes summary is this and that share and then make use of social media rather than scrolling through the timeline and looking what who else is doing what make it smart make it more targeted connect with the right kind of people follow what they are saying engage with in that discussion learn from it and most importantly process your learning whatever you have learned and show it somewhere so if you follow them these steps uh, i'm sure that uh, entry would be quite easy and then here is the steps to grow for growing growing into the field in the beginning if you are a beginner in the field you should focus on developing competencies in many different area and then think of a specialization later so when you get to work you don't think whether it is of my area or not or whether it is in my direction or not just do it just do it and once you have done 20 project 30 projects like that then you look back at it and see what are the things that i actually enjoyed doing most that is your area of specialization so in the beginning don't be choosy in the beginning try to do whatever comes your way so if you have to learn html learn it if you have to learn programming for that learn it these days we are living in a time where all learning is available on fingertips and you don't need to do much like you don't need to be a you know serious programmer in order to uh, do r you just need to understand the basic of the programming the loops the conditions the the flow the classes the attributes that's all and then pay attention to the basic aspects of everything like how internet works how html works how css works how what is the basic fundamental of r and then most importantly learn how to read and learn how to write Uh, there is a very beautiful course on coursera on learning to learn i would highly highly recommend that course for everybody 
go through that course you will get very good strategies on how to learn and then know how to write how to express yourself how to expand an idea how to concise an idea those are the very fundamental skills which i find missing in in most people i hire and i i try to i see that for me it has been extremely valuable like my first job was like you know <laughs> this is crazy my first job was less than 100 dollar a month and my first proper job was 700 dollars from 700 dollars i started earning 7000 dollars in 3 year and not because of any uh, you know kind of that my uncle was owning the company or something like that but only because i never kind of thought that okay this is not my job or this is not my work whatever came on my way i learned and then i made a very clear cut specialization into that so if if you learn and gain competence and if you demonstrate that if your employer doesn't notice somebody else will notice but somebody will notice if you have demonstrated it if you have never demonstrated your talent if you have never demonstrated your competence then there is very low chance that somebody will spend so much time to peep into your brain and look for the competency and notice it okay thirdly once you have done the projects study and all that then try for your growth try to develop one core competence and some auxiliary related to that so if you look at linkedin profile most of people who are uh, really good in their field they look at their profile they have written only one thing that they are good at like i remember there was there is a person who has written his name and then the survey guy so his competence or his area is in survey don't try to be everything so make one core area my core area is uh, measurement that's my core area then you develop certain auxiliary thing around that area so measurement related consulting measurement related coaching measurement related research measurement related analysis so like that so develop one core area and, and some auxiliary area that way you will grow faster than other people uh then some kind of mundane stuff which is when you do the work you always should have some kind of differentiation between the work which is adding value versus the work which is doing maintenance so if you end up finding yourself doing something repeatedly from time to time in a mechanical way that is the perfect candidate for automation automate it find some way to do it so that you don't have to do it all the time and value add work are those which are done once but they give benefit multiple time for example creating let's say a simple automation of report generation in excel and word that's what i did in way back in 2006 uh, i used to get answers from the people in excel sheet and then i wrote small excel macros that they can take the block of text from excel file and put it into word file and generate a report so i had to work once on that for a long time but then that system helped my me and my company for like years several years before we went into we put everything into program and we developed a program in php so so try to always balance your time between the value added work the work which you are doing once and it is giving benefit all the time for example if you learn how to write better email that's a value added work if you learn how to enhance or if you enhance your vocabulary in a particular language you know more words that's a value added work it will it will help you tremendously in many areas if you watch uh let's say a uh, a documentary which gives you some ideas about something some area particular area that is a value added work 
okay if you are let's say writing an article that is a value added work because you write article once and then for entire life it will be read by people if you write good then it will be read by a lot of people if you write average even then it will be read, read by thousands of people so like find find things like that and then there are some maintenance work which you did which you do repeatedly like you do copy paste so if you find yourself doing a lot of maintenance work think take a step back and think how i can mod- automate this work and how can i can convert it into something which i do once and it happens all the time then this is the work side personal side always have a peer group which is critical of you be very careful of not having yes sir or you are very good type people around you so don't have as we say in india like b- buttering type people have have at least one or two person in your group which is very very different from you and who is confronting with you for me that person is my wife like she never agrees with anything i say <laughs> and she is my best litmus test so if i know that i am getting i am getting very attracted towards uh, an idea or some business plan or something i show it to her if she says that that makes sense it means that it's amazing thing otherwise she will highlight at least 20 flaws in that idea or in that plan and that gives me a very good insight to work on so always have some critical person in your friend circle in your family in your work group who is against you who has some vested interest in in kind of you know proving you wrong uh, for me i found my wife because she has some vested interest in proving me wrong and <laughs> so you might have one friend like that who who has some interest in proving you wrong so have that person at least in your network then join associations professional bodies meet up groups meet people the more people you meet the more discussions you do the more places you are the more visibility you will get and the more growth you will get but uh, always remember this is the step after your knowledge and competence don't do it the other way around otherwise if you if you develop your social network your meeting and your professional body membership first before having any like kind of knowledge competence and all that you will be like a fluffy marketer who is not valued so we have seen those kind of people on linkedin all the time uh, they also have followers lot of followers but then they are not valued they they tell a lie most of the time they are just spreading lies there so create your value first create your competence first but just the competence is not enough it is basic it is fundamental it is required it should be done first but then also keep on having a professional network having a personal network uh, of people then last thing is that invest a lot in your self development this is the best investment you can do and here i will give two example uh, i have seen that many students and especially in in france when where i am currently uh, i i was contacted by indian embassy to say that if i can help in corona times to for people who are in covid affected i said well i will be happy to do that here is my number give them and here is the time i am available they can call me so i received a lot of call and most of the time it was call from students who were totally dissatisfied of coming after coming into france they were thinking that they will go study in a french institute get a degree and they will get a job here they find that nobody values them nobody values their knowledge nobody values that degree nobody values that institute and it's like even if it is like the the good institutes and they find it very difficult to cope up with the french language and french culture because france is not a welcoming country they don't say okay yeah most welcome come uh, customer is god or atithi devo bhav they have they don't have that culture 
France is an un- unwelcoming country. They will say that first you prove that you like this country, you adhere to French values, you subscribe to Liberté, Egalité, Fraternité, and then maybe we will extend you support. So it's it's like that. And their their biggest biggest problem was that that they invested hundreds of thousands of euros into their teaching, into their degree, but they did not invest anything into finding which kind of degree I should go for. So I give this uh, typical problem of pizza versus career exploration. A good career exploration exercise will be equal to 10 pizzas in your life. One pizza generally costs like $7, 400 rupees. For 4,000 rupees, you can get good career guidance and counseling from a good, reputed, uh, knowledgeable professional. Now you have to decide whether you want to eat 10 pizza more in your life and be confused about your career, or you want to eat 10 pizza less in your life and you want to go on a career where after spending 80,000 rupees in, uh, sorry, 80,000 euros in education and living expense in, in a foreign country, you find that you are back to square one. Secondly, once you are a working professional, I have another example for you, like party dress versus coaching session. Generally what happens, one party dress, you wear maybe three to four times in, in your whole life. And one party dress, dress cost you roughly 100 to 200 euros. In fact, in my marriage, I decided not to get that 50,000 rupees that, uh, you know, that joker type dress which people wear in the marriage. (laughs) So what I did, I contacted all my friends. I said that if you have anything like that, and uh, fortunately my, uh, my maternal uncle's brother, my maternal uncle's son, so he was Mamera Bhai. He got married just last year. So he had an amazing dress. 75,000 rupees he invested to get that dress. I borrowed it from him. And I wore it for one day. I got it dry cleaned and gave it back. And that dress he has never wore in his life again. It was only one time. Now, why to invest 75,000 rupees in a dress for one day? If you have choice, like, you know, it is, if you have a lot of money and or your father is rich, then yeah, do that, no problem. But then it is equally important to invest in getting proper coaching, getting proper mentoring, getting proper support, guidance. And trust me, like if you have a dress, 35,000 rupees you invested, you will keep that dress. It will be a liability on you because you have to maintain it. You have to keep it proper. It will eat some money. But 35,000 rupees, if you have invested in your coaching, even if it looks like a big expense at the in the beginning, the knowledge and competence and the perspective that you will get from that, it will be with you for life. It will be an asset for you. Because of that, you can increase your consulting charge. You can increase, you can command higher salary because you will know how to negotiate, how to talk, how to discuss, how to present your idea and how to do things. So I think these are some steps to grow into the field. And that's all I wanted to kind of communicate today. Now I have a question for you. Oh, sorry. Yeah, please go to the mentimeter.com and start answering the question. This exercise I did deliberately to highlight a point that at least once in a day, do your audit of your emotions. You ask yourself, how am I feeling at this moment? And just try to kind of get into that feeling, get in touch with your feeling. Because uh, today we don't have time to talk about that aspect, but uh, your feelings are your best messengers. They, They tell you everything and they tell you about your past 
and also about your future. Uh, many a times, uh, you know, if you look back, you must have seen that you are talking to the person, everything seems right, but you feel that something is odd, something is odd, something is odd. Listen to that feeling, because most of the time, if you listen properly, you will know what is odd, and it will save you from getting into big uh, disappointment. So thank you very much for that. That's all I had to share today about career in business psychology.